about uh, these conversations? Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to. Every time I went to J.C. Longstreet's office, he was meeting with somebody else. Well, let's be clear. You heard this conversation in the beginning of the summer, isn't that true? Um, the date is hazy, but it was around the month of August. Actually, I'm going to interrupt this one second. Actually, could you take your seat? I thought you were moving to, to see uh, an exhibit. I don't know if I blanked on that. Just, uh, yes, I want to leave the well available for, for counsel. Uh, yes, sir. Right. You, you heard these conversations in the beginning of August. Well, every day you went to work, you're telling members of the jury you never got a chance to tell your boss? Well, I didn't want to say anything bad until I heard all these sorts of different conversations. Did I wasn't going to base it off of one. Well, you never told your boss any of, the, any of these days past uh, the beginning of the month that you heard these conversations, did you? Well, if I'm wrong, I lose my job. Well, let's talk about what you did here. On August 29th, when you claimed you heard Whit Bowman get, tell Karen Cole, I'll uh, bring you a knife, did you tell your boss then? Well, I, I did hear it, and I didn't get the chance to, no. Well, well Ms. Sh Mr. Sheldon, let's talk about August 30th. Now, when you saw Whit Bowman give Karen Cole a knife, so you alleged, you never told your boss, did you? I mean, I was in a bit of a birthday happiness funk, but... Um, I unfortunately didn't get the chance to do that. Well, let's talk about that real quick. You, you claimed to have seen this when you were on break, right? Yes, I was out of my suit at that point in time. Now, after you while on break when you saw this, you did not run and tell your boss, did you? Um, no, there's no running in the park. I want to talk about after this robbery, Mr. Shelton. Now, after this robbery, you were questioned by police, isn't that right? I was, yes. Uh, the police, they asked you one important question, right? Um, I, I think so. I mean, I saw the statements I gave, but I didn't see the questions. Well, they asked you what you knew about Cameron Poole and Whit Bone. Objection? Your say? No, no, I'm not using the statement for the truth of the matter asserted, but rather the subsequent actions of this witness. You are asking the witness what he knows about Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole does go to the truth of the matter asserted and is therefore inadmissible. Your Honor, can I run You may. Opposing counsel is uh, confusing my question. I asked this witness, you know that the police, they asked you a question. And that question was, what did you know about Cameron Poole and Whit Bowman? Objections overruled. Now the police, they asked you what you knew about Whit Bowman and Cameron Poole. Isn't that right? Yes, and I told them how they had stolen at a previous park that I worked at. Well, did you tell them that you heard the conversations? Uh, no, about uh, some time through the interview, uh, they threatened to arrest me if I didn't get out of my suit, so it got a little bit stressful. Well, Mr. Shelton, let's make this clear. You didn't tell the police about the conversations you claimed overheard. Well, I don't like being arrested. You didn't tell the police that on the day of the robbery, you, t you thought you saw what Bowman gave Cameron pull a knife. I hadn't at the time. They weren't taking me seriously. Well, you told them that when Cameron Poole's running away from the ticket booth, he had something <coughs> shiny in his hand, right? I, I would love to have been able to tell them. Mr. Shelton, maybe my question wasn't clear. Did you tell the police that you saw Cameron Poole with something shiny in his hand after this robbery? I, I did say that uh, Cameron Poole had something shiny in his hand when he came up to the ticket booth. When you told the police that, you didn't tell them, well, I think that knife belonged to Whit Bone. You didn't tell the police that, did you? Uh, I hadn't at the time, no, I guess. Well, let's find out why we're hearing it today. Oh, Mr. Shelton, your hope, you thought that if you could foil what you thought was a scheme between Cameron Paul and Bowman, well, that you would become a hero. I, I guess one could say that. I mean, I wanted to be renowned and be, you know, a famous mascot. You, you thought that you could become a hero, yes or no? Um, depending on your definition of hero, yeah. Well, you would say that you thought you could become a hero if you could foil what you thought was a scheme between Whit Bone and Cameron Poole. Um, yeah, I guess so. You thought that you, your boss <coughs> would give you a promotion. Isn't that right? Um, that, that was one level of it. More than anything, I wanted to be, like, in the big leagues. Well, you thought, let's make this clear, you thought that if you could... Foy, what you thought was a scheme, your boss will give you promotion. I just saw employees doing weird things and wanted to mention it. Objection, Your Honor. Not responsive. I'm asking this witness what he thought he would gain out of 
foiling what he believed was a scheme, and he has not given me a clear answer at all. Your Honor, I believe the witness's response was within the bounds of the question. He said that he saw employees doing things that were strange to him, which is certainly within the bounds of what opposing counsel did ask. I'm inclined to agree that it was an answer. If you didn't get the answer you're looking for, you can try to get it another way. Yes, Your Honor. You thought that if you could spoil, foil what you thought was a scheme between Whip Bowman and Karen Cole, that your boss would give you a promotion, yes or no? The thought entered my head, but a promotion didn't happen. So well, I, I guess the answer is yes. Now let's. I want to talk about what you clearly know. Now in 2011, that's when Whip Bowman began working at Rockport, isn't that right? Yes. Now in that summer, did you ever see any of these fake wristbands you spoke about a moment ago? Uh, no, they didn't until the lunch of the scene. They did everything together. Now, well, in 2011, you never saw Whip Bowman with these wristbands. Well, Cameron Poole wasn't with her. Now, in 2012, Cameron Poole began working the ticket booth? Yes, that's true. 2012, that's when the wristband showed up? Yeah, um, it was a little bit after the summer. During, so it wasn't immediately in 2012, but yes. During that summer, you never saw Whip Bowman with these fake wristbands? I only saw customers with the fake wristbands. You never saw Whip Bowman handling the fake wristbands? I didn't see anyone handling them. I just saw them on customers. You never saw Whip Bowman handle the fake wristbands, yes or no? Objection. Ask and answer. Objection sustained. You never saw Whip Bowman receive money from Cameron Poole that entire summer? Uh, no, I haven't seen anybody really receive money. Specifically, you never saw Whip Bowman receive money from Cameron Poole. No, and vice versa. And that summer, Whip, you never saw Whip Bowman working the ticket booth. No, she was a ride operator. And that summer, you only saw Cameron Poole working in that ticket booth. She was the only one permitted to work in the ticket booth. No further questions. 